Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to this review of Card Apocalypse on the Apple Arcade on iOS. So it is rated ages four plus. Just up front, I would say whoever rated it that probably didn't actually play through the entire game or pay enough attention to some of the dialogue. Uh, there are some curse words in there. There's some rude humor as well. So frankly, I would rate this at least nine plus, probably twelve plus, um, just due to some of the content of the dialogue and to some of the rude humor and to some of the scarier looking cards and scenarios in the story mode. So let's continue what I've done. Once you've beaten story mode, there's still challenges and things to do. The game is quite good, in my opinion. Uh, Apple Arcade is basically $4.99 a month, and you can get games like this. This is a full story mode campaign. You play Jess, a child in a wheelchair, at Dudsdale Elementary. I believe Jess is 11 years old. We have friends like Yolanda. We have a bully named Bruce, etc., etc. You get to choose how you react to things. There's usually three options. But the main focus of the game is creating decks of cards and the game called Card Apocalypse. Well, actually, it's Mega Mutant Power Pets. Card Apocalypse doesn't show up until, uh, yeah, later in the game. Let's play with our Pipsqueak deck. But yeah, as you can see, like Frankenstoat, there's a little bit of blood on there. You know, you may not want a four-year-old child looking at that card. Etc, etc. I'm trying to think if there's Queasy. Let's see, Queasy basically just doesn't look too healthy. Yeah, yeah. Let's try to face Yolanda down with Wolfgang. As you can see, he looks a little bit Frankenstein-y himself. That is another problem in the game, is sometimes it will crash. Usually, the game is pretty good about reloading close to where you were. Uh, if you have accomplished missions and things, then it will remember. I haven't had it forget on me, which is pretty interesting. It may move you around and stuff like that, but generally speaking, pretty good at not losing your spot. And that is probably the only major issue I've had in this game. You get that kind of 90s rock as well. Because the basic idea is you're playing a card game based off of a, you know, a 90s kids cartoon, Mega Mutant Power Pets, blah blah blah. So yeah, we're back here, pretty close to where Yolanda was. The other bugs that I think might still be in the game, they do keep updating, yeah, are related to deck building, which, you know, that's kind of important in a game about card games. So, let's go into here. We can go into edit. I'll go check out Smolder. Right now we have options underneath the card to remove from deck, pin to starting hand, etc, etc. So, as you go through the game, you can unlock things that affect the entire game progression, how the game plays, and so on and so forth. Let's try this again. I don't know if maybe there's a bug right now where this isn't working. Here we go. It is working. So, okay. We got that. She played a mutation, which is like a secret in Hearthstone. So, thankfully, that activated too quickly. And then, because we progressed in the game, there are also random mutations on the side that are not in the base game. But throughout the story mode, you get all these random things that happen when you defeat some of the uh, villains of the game. I don't want to reveal too much, but uh, yeah. So we're playing Wolfgang, and our main thing is our damage minions have more attack power. And then when we turn Mega, or when we hit half health, which is true for all champions, a special effect will happen. Uh, our minions will cost five less food until the end of our turn. And food is your energy or your mana, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I currently have a sticker on this card. That's what that white thing is. That made the food cost of this card go down to four. So basically, this guy will continuously throw out cards. Normally, this Pipsqueak card, which is also a rare Pipsqueak card, could not be played in a Woofian deck. But that's another thing we unlocked at the end of the game. So, yes, there's a lot of game progression and things to do. Yolanda is definitely beating me on the board right now. 
We're gonna have to see how things go. Normally you start with one food. We start with basically three or four because, once again, we are further ahead in the campaign. And as you can see, your champion can attack. There are all these different effects. You build a card deck of about 20 cards. You can have multiples of the cards. Uh, the game has a lot of replayability because... Oh, well, that guy just gained five health from that mutation. Hmm. And of course that just happened as well. What is this one? And one of our minions is destroyed, eh? So we should get that one. Oh, okay. So yes, it looks like we will not win this one. Let's see. We have Mark Angel, Chiquita. Hmm. Glitters. Glitters can stun people. It has charge. I think we will play Glitters, because we need to not die if we can help it. We'll do that. Hmm. Yeah, I think we need to stim the flow. So there we go. I will... Oh, I should have... Well, I'll still do it. We'll transform into Mega. Mega. So now we've got that going on. And everything went down by five, so we can play these guys. Once again, we're just trying to survive, so everything has plus two attack. Okay, this isn't great. We're gonna die right here. We didn't get any of our defender cards, which are like Taunt and Hearthstone. So, yeah, yeah. Once again, card games. There's a little bit of luck involved there. So that's another thing. Here's another one of our friends, Ashley. She's an interesting child. We got Jacob and Cedric. We saved Jacob from being kidnapped by uh, crazy villain people. Yeah. But yeah, if your kids watch Stranger Things or anything like that, they'll be more than fine with this. Um, probably most Saturday morning cartoons that are like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles love. So there's a lot to do. As you can see, all these little white dots represent who we can go see, talk to, trade with, etc. We used to be able to use the map to fast travel to different rooms in the school. There are icons that help you figure out what you can do next. We had missions. Here's our stickers. So this is really cool. You can customize your cards how you want. So you can do that by unlocking these stickers in the game. Now, one thing to note is in the story mode, you will not be able to get all the cards unlocked and useful for you to use. So that's one of the replayability aspects, is if you want to build a certain deck, you're pretty much going to have to sacrifice cards from the other pools, shall we say, or factions. I guess we'll call them factions. Yeah. But anyway, even with that though, I could still generally build about three decent decks. I had to sacrifice a lot of Sinister cards to trade for the other ones. So, yeah, they didn't quite work out as well. But as you can see, let me actually take a look at these cards for you. There's maybe a little bit of frightening card art in here. Yep, yep, yep. So we'll take a look at some of these guys. And these are the majority of the cards in the game. You know, you can get candy to trade for kids. One other thing is there's not much uh, respect for authority in this game. That might be something else parents are a little worried about. Especially since the adults really uh, are ignoring some of the problems that are popping up. So, yeah. The kids feel like it's up to them to solve the problems. Because, you know, that makes a game happen. There's a conflict. There's a story. But maybe some themes you don't want your kids really into. But yeah, so here are the things. And there's some candy we could trade. Oh, yeah, there's Bunnable, who's a clear reference to Hannibal Lecter. Well, yeah. So we'll do all that. We'll exit here. We can click save if we want to save our own file. We can load an older file. You can do tutorials, and I think the tutorials are generally pretty good. So they do teach you how to play the game pretty easily. And now, their most recent update did the Gauntlet mode. And I've been having fun with that, so I'm planning to do some more episodes on this. Uh, you can check out my previous episode to see the Gauntlet. But basically, it's like a Hearthstone dungeon run, where, yeah, we can just click continue from our previous one. So that's also nice, is you can leave it by clicking main menu with that options thing. 
down here. So we will go back to the main menu. Yes, that is one issue I had with Pirates Outlaws, is that you can't really save your run when you're in the middle of it. I guess it's to prevent exploits and things, but eh. And I'm more just put off by that when it's supposed to be more of a mobile game. You know, so if it's not easy to play and pick up and put down, then how many people are going to want to pick it up? You know, that's just kind of the reality of life right now. But anyway, that's Cardpocalypse in a nutshell. Let me know if you want any more information about the game, but I do have an entire playlist going through the story if you want to check it out. And once again, if you've enjoyed this video, you can leave a like. You can share this video with a friend if you think they'll enjoy it. Subscribe if you wish to see more iOS gaming videos. And once again, just comment if you want to see anything else about Cardpocalypse or any other games. Have a great day.